For this example, we have the polynomial f, which is a cubic polynomial, and we want to factor this polynomial uh, over the real numbers and then over the complex numbers. Uh, so let's, we could plot this using technology such as Desmos to get an idea of what we should expect. And so the graph uh, I've plotted is given over here on the right. And um, looking at this graph, we can see that there seems to be one zero at x equals minus seven over here. And there doesn't seem to be any other zeros. Um, so let's confirm this uh, analytically using algebra. So um, it seems in part A, since x minus seven seems to be a zero, that x plus seven is a factor. And we could check this by dividing that into the polynomial. So we take x plus 7 and divide this into the polynomial x cubed minus x squared minus 39x plus 119. And so doing the polynomial division, I would multiply the divider by x squared to match these terms. That would give me x cubed um, plus 7x squared, and subtracting the x cubes, cancel, and what's left is minus x squared minus 7x squared, which gives us minus 8x squared, and we bring the remainder down. So now we need to multiply by minus 8x, and that would give us minus 8x squared, minus 56x. And now we subtract this. And again, the leading terms cancel. And what's left over is 17x plus 119. So that means I need to finally try multiplying by 17. And that would give us 17x plus 119 so when we subtract, everything cancels, and we get a remainder of 0. So that checks out. So x plus 7 is indeed a factor of this polynomial. So uh, at this point, we have that f of x is equal to the factor x plus 7 times the quotient that we just found, which was x squared minus 8x plus 17. And uh, this is going to be as far as we can factor this over the real numbers since looking at the graph, there are no other places where the graph crosses the x-axis. So we only have one x-intercept. And over here it gets close, but we can see it doesn't quite intersect the x-axis at any other points. Um, so that takes care of factoring it over the real numbers in part A. Uh, for part B, to find the real zeros and the, therefore factoring it completely over the complex numbers, we can use the quadratic formula on the remaining quadratic factor over here. So from the quadratic formula, we would get that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 8 squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. Okay, so in this case, our value of a is 1, our value of b is minus 8, and c is 17. And simplifying this, we get minus, uh, excuse me, the two negatives uh, in front of the 8 give me positive 8, plus or minus, and simplifying underneath the square root gives us minus 4, so we get the square root of minus 4 over 2. And so this confirms, the fact that we have a negative underneath here confirms that we can't factor the quadratic any further over the real numbers. 
And now we can simplify the complex zeros a bit. So the square root of minus four gives us plus or minus two i over two. And we can factor out a two from each term in the numerator. So this gives us two complex roots at four plus or minus i. And uh, we also had one real root that we found initially from the graph at minus seven. So that concludes part B. And from these three zeros that we found, we can factor this more completely over complex numbers than we could over the real numbers. So we have f of x is equal to the real root was x plus seven, since minus seven was one, zero. And then we have x minus four minus i times x minus four plus i. So there is the polynomial factored over the complex numbers. And so notice that we don't get the same exact thing when we factor over complex and real numbers because we only have one real root down here, minus seven, and we have two complex roots.